Here you go. So hello, hello everyone. And uh, today uh, we have uh, Sam Vaknin here today uh, with us, uh, the author of Malignant Self-Love Narcissism. Revisited, hello Sam. Hello, thank you for having me again. Uh, thank you so much because I know that you are busy and uh, yeah, no, so, no, so, never so too busy to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Today I would love to speak with you about mortification. Uh, and my first question will be um, what is mortification about? Because um, it's a difficult topic and not so many people understand what is yes. it and you know. Yes. Unfortunately, the leading the leading videos on narcissistic mortifications, which were made in the past few weeks, are very misleading. So when you go on YouTube and you type narcissistic mortification, you get videos from self-styled experts that are completely wrong. They confuse narcissistic mortification with narcissistic injury, narcissistic mm. wound, and narcissistic scar. So I suggest to start by defining what, what is injury wound and scar and okay. then we can go on to discuss narcissistic mortification and then you will see Perfect. the huge you will see the huge difference between injury narcissistic injury and narcissistic uh, mortification i'm again warning that the only credible sources for information about narcissistic mortification in this particular case happen to be on my channel because i have four videos based on the literature on the scholarly literature, the academic literature. All other videos, regrettably, uh, confuse completely narcissistic injury and narcissistic mortification. So you should be very careful what you're watching and what you believe once you're watching. Let's start with sure. definitions. Narcissistic injury, and I'm reading, is an occasional or circumstantial threat, real or imagined, to the narcissist's grandiose and fantastic self-perception, the false self as perfect, omnipotent, omniscient, and entitled to special treatment and recognition, regardless of actual accomplishments. So any threat to this self-perception, this inflated, grandiose self-view, is narcissistic injury. Narcissistic wound is a repeated or recurrent, identical or similar threat. In other words, narcissistic wound is simply narcissistic injury that keeps repeating itself. So okay. if you have the same injury time and again, for example, from the same person or in the same environment or owing to the same circumstances, if the injury repeats itself, it becomes a wound. And then there is narcissistic scar. Narcissistic scar is a psychological defense against a narcissistic wound. The defense is intended to sustain and preserve the narcissist's grandiose and fantastic self-perception, his false self. So these are the three things. Mortification has nothing to do <laughs> with narcissistic injury or narcissistic wound. Absolutely nothing. It's a totally different dynamic with totally different outcomes for totally different reasons. The etiopathology, the etiology, the causation yeah. of mortification is very different. The, the whole process is very different. And it's a great uh, misfortune that people online are confusing the two. So now, if you want, we can discuss narcissistic mortification. Yes, please. Okay. We start with phenomenology. How does it look? How does mortification look? Yeah. Mortification happens only when there is someone, a human being, who aggresses against the narcissist, becomes aggressive with the narcissist, shouts at the narcissist, humiliates the narcissist, attacks the narcissist physically, verbally, psychologically, in any way. So there must be an aggressor. Condition number one. Condition number two, it must be in public, not, not privately. Mortification never happens privately, only in public. And not only any public, but a public that matters to the narcissist. For example, mm -hmm. his, his colleagues, or his peers, or people he admires, role models, and so on. So that's the second condition, public. The third condition, it must be sudden, unexpected, unpredictable, abrupt, so that the narcissist is not preparing himself 
but it's like a thunder and he's shocked completely and is without defenses. That is the third condition. Now, if these three conditions are met, an aggressing person, person who aggresses against a narcissist, suddenly in public, the narcissist reacts with narcissistic mortification. Narcissistic mortification involves shame, humiliation, trauma, real trauma, not mini trauma, severe trauma, de depression, anxiety, and all these attack happen to the narcissist at the same moment. So he is utterly overwhelmed and flooded. And this is, of course, a borderline condition. This yes. is emotional dysregulation. What mortification does to the narcissist, it strips away the defenses, the narcissistic defenses, like the false self. And then what is left is actually a borderline, someone with borderline personality organization or borderline defenses. At that moment, the narcissist realizes the limitations and defects of his true self. In other words, the false self is disabled, deactivated. We call this process decompensation. There is no false self separating the narcissist from the world. So reality impinges on the narcissist, touches the narcissist directly without a firewall, without protection, without mediation. It's very direct. And then the narcissist feels how defective he is, how limited he is, how, what a failure he is, what a loser, how inadequate he is. In other words, the narcissist mm -hmm. gets in touch or becomes aware of his internal bad object. This is, mm -hmm. this is how it looks. Now, the minute this happens, um, when the defenses are down, some really, really terrifying things begin to happen to the narcissist. I want you to understand that all this takes place within five minutes. Mortification oh. is not a process. It's not a process. Okay. It's an event. So, so how is this process unfolds when this, um, you know, when NPD sees himself or herself, right, uh, without filter, with that, without... Um, false self at that moment when the false self is disabled the narcissist is no longer able to confuse external objects with internal objects remember oh. remember that in pathological narcissism there is a confusion between external objects and internal objects the narcissist internalizes external objects and then he feels that he is in control because internal objects can be controlled. They never abandon the narcissist. They never humiliate the narcissist. They, so the narcissist prefers to be in touch with internal object, objects that represent external objects. So if the narcissist is in touch with you, if he's in an intimate relationship with you, even if he's your friend, or even if he's your colleague, he's going to create a snapshot of you, a photograph of you, and he's going to internalize it. He's going to introject it. And he's going to continue to interact with the photograph, not with you, never with you. This is a defense because that way the narcissist feels superior and safe. The object is inside his mind, so he's the boss. But mortification destroys this mechanism. So the narcissist no longer is able to internalize you you become an, a truly external object which is out of control. And so the narcissist is in a state of terror, horror, mm -hmm. disorientation. The false self is destroyed and all the external objects invade, invade mm -hmm. the narcissist's mind, like Russia invaded Ukraine. You know, all the, all the external objects that the narcissist kept out suddenly they intrude, they penetrate the narcissist's mind, and the narcissist is totally at a loss what to do. He feels hopeless. He feels like there's no alternatives. He feels helpless. And mm -hmm. above all, he feels that, he's lo that he has lost control over his, his mm -hmm. own world, over his internal mm -hmm. world and the external world. So he is no longer God. 
is no longer perfect because mm -hmm. God controls everything. And so the mortification disabled the false self. The external objects invaded the narcissist's mind. He became aware of the external objects. He lost control. And that means that he is not perfect. He is not God godlike. So huge shame and huge humiliation that he is not God. Because the narcissist defenses, I'm God, I'm, I know everything, I'm all powerful. These are defenses against shame, against inferiority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't have these defenses anymore. And he literally disintegrates. He falls apart. He becomes paralyzed, disabled, depressed, anxious, and absolutely suicidal. Mm -hmm. Mortification leads to two Two effects that are rare in narcissism. Number one, self-awareness. Self-awareness of the bad object, limitations, defects, inabilities, inadequacies, deficiencies, deficits. <laughs> this is new to the narcissist. This is shocking. And it comes as a river. You cannot stop it, you know, because the false self is disabled. And the second thing is intrusion of external objects terrify the narcissist so much and that when it is coupled with his shame over not being God anymore, he wants to die. It's a very powerful suicidal ideation. Again, it's a borderline condition. Again, this is actually a borderline state. Mortification is regression, regression of the narcissist back to borderline condition. Grotstein, who was a famous psychoanalyst, Grotstein said that narcissism um, is a borderline, I'm sorry, borderline is failed narcissism. Yes. The, bo the borderline wants to be a narcissist as a child, but she fails and she remains a borderline. The narcissistic child succeeds to become a narcissist, but the mortification pushes the narcissist back in time to very early childhood, when he was still borderline, before he became narcissist. Because all the defenses are gone, and he becomes borderline. He's suicidal, he wants to mutilate himself, he's full of shame, humiliation, he's terrified of external objects, he has abandonment anxiety, he becomes exactly borderline. But the borderline is used to be borderline, you know? She has experience. She develops defenses. She develops routines, procedures. She manages to survive with her disorder. The narcissist doesn't have experience how to be a borderline. So when the narcissist is suddenly overwhelmed and flooded with a borderline condition, narcissist develops major depression and extreme suicidal ideation. Very dangerous condition for the narcissist. He also becomes self-aware. So if there is a therapeutic intervention, this is the time. Mortification is the time for, for therapy, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. Libby, Libby, which is one of the great scholars of narcissistic mortification, she described two types of narcissists, what she called the deflated narcissist. Today we call it covert narcissist. The deflated narcissist and the inflated narcissist. Today we call them covert and overt. So she said that uh, when the when mortification happens, there is an initial phase of paralysis. The narcissist is paralyzed. He is so shocked. All the experiences in mortification are totally new to the narcissist. For example, direct contact with external objects. He doesn't know how to do this. Finally, being in touch with emotions. He doesn't know how to deal with emotions. The bad object takes over. His grandiosity is incapacitated. He doesn't know how to deal with all this. There's no fantasy defense. There's no cognitive distortion. I mean, he would rather die. It's so shameful, shaming, humiliating, depressing, and above all, terrorizing that he wants to die. That phase lasts anywhere from days to weeks. That's a very dangerous period if there's no therapy. Mm -hmm. Following this phase, the narcissist tries to rebuild his narcissistic defenses. And Libby describes a process 
which she calls internal to external mortification. And this is a very interesting process. The narcissist, remember, is not grandiose now. The mortification disabled the grandiosity. Narcissist has been humiliated publicly, shamed publicly by, by aggressive person, so he cannot be grandiose. So the narcissist tries to rebuild his grandiosity. How does he do that? By lying to himself, of course. That's what narcissists do. <laughs> so he lies to himself. He says, this person who wronged me, this person who humiliated me, this person who shamed me, he did all this because I made him do it. I made mm -hmm. her do She cheated on me in public with someone because I pushed her to cheat on me. He stole, he, he humiliated me in public because I provoked him. So the narcissist lies to himself that the aggression that he had experienced was because of him, of his behavior, or actually because of his misbehavior. He says to himself, yeah, people humiliated me, people shamed me, people attacked me, people aggressed against me, people were bad to me, evil even, but all of this because I made them behave this way. I controlled their behavior. Mm -hmm. So because I controlled their behavior, it means that I am God. I'm again God. They were my puppets. They were just my puppets. And I was the puppet master. I was playing with their strings. <laughs> so he is lying mm -hmm. to himself. This is called autoplastic defense. Autoplastic defense says... I'm guilty, I'm responsible, I'm to blame, I made all this happen, I was in charge, I was in control, and even I'm evil, I did it because I'm evil. And then the narcissist restores his sense of control and sense of grandiosity, because all these people who misbehaved, humiliated him, mocked him, laughed at him, attacked him, criticize him, disagree with him, all these people, they did all these things because he told them to do, the, to do it. He was in charge. So this is called internal defense. Libby, mm -hmm. Libby's term is internal mortification. But then, at some point, the narcissist, if, if the narcissist keeps saying, I'm the bad guy, I'm the bad guy, I'm evil, I push them to do it, I push this woman to cheat on me. I push this man to criticize me. I push the other men to beat me up. I push them to do it in public. I provoke them. I attack them. I humiliate them. So this was retaliation, reactive abuse. Yeah? But if the narcissist keeps telling himself this story, that means that he is a bad object. It means that he is evil. He is man malevolent. And the narcissist cannot accept that he is a bad object. Because if the narcissist gets in touch with his bad object, he becomes suicidal borderline. That's very dangerous. So the internal solution for the, for the mortification, the solution that says, I'm the bad guy and I made everyone behave badly. This solution cannot hold. Because it mm -hmm. means... It means your bad object is correct. So then the narcissist transitions to an external solution. So fir first stage, paralysis. Second stage, internal solution. I made them do it. Third stage, external solution. External solution is alloplastic. It's an alloplastic defense. External solution simply says, these people are evil. They are malevolent and malicious. They're bad. They conspired against me. They, they are ungrateful, etc., etc. So now, mm -hmm. now they are bad, not the narcissist. Mm -hmm. The narcissist didn't do anything. They, they attacked him for no reason. So it's exactly the opposite of the internal solution. The narcissist's mind is very flexible. <laughs> the narcissist can lie to himself that way, and then the next minute can lie to himself exactly the opposite. It's a, it's a form of mental illness because the narcissist has no dissonance when he contradicts himself. Healthy people have dissonance when they contradict themselves, not the narcissist. So now the narcissist says, forget my previous story. 
I did not provoke them. I didn't do anything bad to them. I was not the puppet masters. They were not my puppets. They are bad people. They're evil people. They did it on purpose. It's a conspiracy against me. And this is alloplastic defense. And then he develops paranoia. He becomes paranoid. He said, these people, they're my enemies. And they're going to persecute me. And they're going to pursue me. And so, therefore, I must destroy them. And the narcissist becomes psychopathic, vindictive, and truly mm -hmm. evil. Truly evil. And he tries to destroy these people who caused him the mortification because he believes... So, yes. So, what, what can we expect when we are mortified uh, narcissist? When we are this uh, aggressive person? He will come after you. He will transition. He will be paralyzed, depressed, suicidal. This, that. Then he yeah. will. Then he will. Then he will posture. He will say, "You are nothing. You're just a puppet. I made you do it. I was in control. You did what mm -hmm. I wanted you to do. What you did, I wanted you to do. It. it was me, and so on. And then suddenly, but very suddenly, because he cannot tolerate the bad object. He cannot say, "I am the bad person who made you misbehave." I'm the evil person. I caused you to cheat on me, to betray me. You know, he cannot say that because he cannot admit that he's a bad object. So suddenly he will move and you will become the bad object. And he will mm -hmm. try to destroy you. He will become very vindictive. He will conspire against you. He will lie. He will he will try to destroy you in every way possible. He's very he will become very vindictive in the long term. It can take years. It can take absolutely mm -hmm. years until mm -hmm. he's satisfied that he had punished you somehow and that mm -hmm. justice has been restored and balance has been restored and his grandiosity and control have been restored because he's like mm -hmm. God. God punishes the sinners. He needs to punish you because you committed a sin. You were sinful. He is God. You attacked God. This is blasphemy. You need to be mm -hmm. you need to be burned on the stake like the Inquisition, you know. So he, is, he has this morality. He, in his mind, he is a moral person. For punishing you, this is a moral, ethical act because you are evil. You are vicious. You are wicked. You are a sinner. And you must be punished. You must be taught a lesson. Or you must be removed from society, put in prison or something. Mm -hmm. You must be punished. Because if you are not the, bad, the evil person, the narcissist is the evil person. One of you is evil. Mm -hmm. Either the narcissist deserves the mortification because he's evil, he's bad, mm -hmm. or the narcissist is innocent. He's a victim. He didn't do anything wrong. And that makes you evil, makes you wicked. And so you need to be punished to restore justice, cosmic justice, but also to teach you a lesson and to remove you from society. That's, that's dangerous. Very dangerous. Mortified narcissists are vengeance machines. They go on and on and on, and they are unstoppable. And never mind how many times they fail, they go on. They, they never stop. And because they lost their grandiosity, they need to restore it, yeah. and only you can restore it. The problem is you took away their grandiosity. Now you have it. They want it back. The only way for them to restore their grandiosity is to devalue you, to destroy you, because you took. If we will, mm -hmm. if we will disappear from uh, from his or her life, what then after no. mortification? Not such thing, because you never existed in in his life. You were never an external object. You're an internal object. Mm -hmm. So you're always in the narcissist's mind. Never mind where you go. You can go to yes, I understand this, but when you're disappeared with, uh, like, you know, you moved somewhere or you changed job, uh, whatever. Nothing. No. Nothing. Nothing. Because the narcissist has introject constancy. In other words, you are in the narcissist's mind until he dies. Mm -hmm. And your introject is in the narcissist's mind. The narcissist continues to interact with your introject, even if you divorced him 20 years ago. He continues mm -hmm. to have dialogues with you. He continues to punish you or to correct you or to, and then suddenly he can appear after 20 years and continue like nothing happened because he did have a continuous relationship with you 
in his mind. You went away. You got married. You had children. I don't know what happened to you. Yeah. But in the narcissist's mind, you're still here inside his head. And so he doesn't see anything strange to continue the relationship with you after 20 years. He Every day he had a relationship with you. Same, mm -hmm. same with modification. You became a persecutory object. It's called a persecutory object. You became, you became an enemy within. And he needs to eradicate this enemy. He needs to destroy this enemy. And where you are physically is totally irrelevant. Because the battle, the war, is inside his head. He needs yes. to kill you. He needs to destroy you to match the external object with the internal object. Once he succeeds to destroy the internal objects, he needs to destroy the external so that he can match them and have peace. But the battle is, is ongoing in, in his head. And so he, he, he makes all kinds of conspiracies and plans. He stalks you, he attacks you. He goes to the police and lies. He goes to, I mean, he, mm -hmm. he, would, he would never stop. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I say he, to be clear, it applies to women as well. That's uh, just to be clear. Today, more or less, it's 50-50. Borderline and narcissism are 50-50. 50% 50 .50 male and 50% female. It's a, it's, a, it's a dramatic change in the last 20 years because 20 years ago, about 75% of people diagnosed with narcissism were men. Today, it's only 50%. Women are becoming more and more and more narcissistic and psychopathic. And... Um, mm -hmm. And so, and by the way, less and less borderline. So this is a very dangerous situation because if you, because women are much more sensitive to mortification than men. For example, mm -hmm. it's much easier to mortify a woman. All you have to say, all you have to do is criticize the way she looks. If you tell a man you're fat, you're fat. Okay, you, you say to a man you're fat in public. It will be narcissistic injury. If the man is a narcissist and you tell the, the man you're fat, it's injury, but it's never mortification. But if you tell a woman you're ugly and fat in public, that's mortification. So women have many more, many more options and venues for mortification. Women are much more easily mortified than men, much, much more, because they are much more sensitive on multiple levels, including the, the way they look. The way they eat, mm -hmm. the way they dress, mm -hmm. the way men don't have all this. Men, men doesn't care if you tell him you are dressed badly. Okay, I dress badly. What's next? What's on the menu? But you tell that to a woman, and you do it yeah. in, in a shaming, humiliating way in public, in front of her own girlfriends, for example, mm -hmm. or women she competes with, and you you definitely might create mortification, and then you're her, her enemy for life until she destroys. Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. the rise in narcissism and psychopathy among women is absolutely terrifying. Terrifying. Because the potential for mortification is, I think, three, four times higher among women than among men. Mm -hmm. Sam, if we still have a time, how NPD, if he or she can cope with, more, uh, cope with uh, mortification uh, by himself or herself? Is it possible? Yes, if, if uh, you don't commit suicide, if you survive the depression, the internal solution will kick in automatically. The internal and the external solution, the solution is described by Libby. These two solutions, they're automatic. It's not a decision. Okay. It's not a choice of the nurses. They mm -hmm. kick in automatically. So you have to, just to survive the period. You have to survive the period where you are very depressed and anxious, humiliated and ashamed to the point that you want to die. So you have to survive that period. And if you survive it, then your grandiosity will be restored, your false self, and so on. So during that so period, life... during that period yeah. the narcissist is a borderline, then the chances for suicide are, in some settings, up to 60%. It's very, very, okay. it's a traumatized borderline. And I have another video where I where I analyze the situation there with studies and so on. So about 62% chance of suicide. It's not small. It's very, very dangerous. Some last questions. You are speaking a lot uh, about, um, you know, different emotions, but mostly about shame. Why shame is uh, 
associated with mortification. Why, why this one? Shame. Well, first of all, mortification involves being yes. humiliated or being ashamed in public. Yeah, but you know. Shame, shame, is the, shame is the main emotion in narcissism. And many, many scholars like Morrison and, and others, they think that, that narcissism is, is defense against shame. The child, the, the small child is made to feel ashamed, made to feel insufficient, inadequate. Love is conditioned on performance and very often the performance is not enough. And so on and so forth. So it's, it's uh, the manipulation of a small child who later becomes a narcissist consists of shaming the child somehow. And the child accumulates this shame a lot. The child is also ashamed that he cannot become an individual. The parental figures don't allow the child to separate and individuate, don't, don't allow the child to become a person. They breach the child's boundaries. They don't respect the child. In other words, abuse is a, is a form of disrespect. So abuse causes a lot of shame. That's why, that's why victims very often don't complain. They don't complain because they feel ashamed. They feel ashamed of their victimhood. The child is a victim and feels ashamed of his victimhood and he carries this shame through life and he grieves. He grieves what he could have been and would never be. And he grieves the way his parents uh, treated him. So there's a, what we call long grief. Long grief and shame. When mortification happens, the narcissist gets in touch with his shame because all his defenses disappear. He suddenly feels yes. like he is a two-year-old with huge shame and nothing to do about it. He's helpless and he's hopeless. And there is this overwhelming sense of grief, mourning. And then there's a question, what am I grieving? If I'm a narcissist, I've been mortified. I'm depressed. I'm anxious. I'm in touch with my shame and I'm, I'm grieving. What am I grieving? I'm grieving myself. I'm grieving myself. So if I'm grieving myself, I'm already dead. That's the big lesson and realization of mortification. Suddenly the narcissist realizes that he is dead inside, that he has never lived. There's never been a life there. So he says, all my life has been fake. I've always been dead. Let me die. Let me just die. And that's, okay. if, Thank if you. mortification is not, you know, for example, if a narcissist is lonely, there's no family, no friends, which is the typical case when the narcissist is much older, and so on and so forth, the chances of suicide are, are enormous, absolutely enormous. So even if you don't like a narcissist, even if you think many times before you humiliate or shame or attack a narcissist in public, because you may well be condemning, condemning him to death. And yeah, there are many narcissists deserve many punishments, but I don't think death is one of them. Sam, thank you so much for explaining this uh, for us, because like yeah. I said before, it's really difficult uh, topic and it's a lot of misunderstanding. So uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, it was nice to talk to you. Yes, nice to see you again. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much. Take care. Yeah. Bye.